Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 4.5, exponential broken decay. Exponential decay, half-life. Uh, I should clarify that half-life is an example of exponential decay. It is not the definition of exponential decay. Exponential decay is just like exponential growth, except your population is going up instead of down. So we could have just on the previous problem, reversed the two populations in the years 2000 and 2010 and done an exponential decay model. It's an interesting exercise. I invite you to try it. Well, what do I mean by half-life? A lot of you have heard the phrase half-life, perhaps in the context of video games. But scientifically speaking, the half-life of a population is the time it takes for the population to decay to half its current size. So for example, let's say we have 10 grams of a radioactive element. Its half-life is how long it would take to decay to 5 grams. The amount of time it takes is irrelevant on the initial amount. It would take the same amount of time to decay from 10 grams to 5 grams as it would to decay from 100 grams to 50 grams, because both of them decay by one half. An example of half-life that may be a little bit more applicable to your life is aspirin in your bloodstream. When you take aspirin, it slowly, uh, I mean, it gets into your bloodstream and then it starts doing its thing and dissolving and there's less and less of it in your bloodstream. The half-life of aspirin in your bloodstream is 12 hours. Meaning if you take, I don't know, I'm just making up a number, 50 milligrams of aspirin, then in 12 hours, there's half of that left, 25 milligrams. And in another 12 hours, there's half of that left. Half of 25 is 12.5. Theoretically, you would never run out of aspirin in your bloodstream because it would keep getting cut in half but never totally disappear. But then again, there are other things going on in your body that might take care of the rest of it at the end. I'm not biologically savvy enough to have that discussion. But we are, I'm mathematically savvy enough to A, build the model, and B, answer the question, how long will it take for aspirin to decay to 10%. Pharmacists need to know things like this so that they can prescribe the correct amount of medicine to have in your body. Because if you take a dosage, it's going to start decaying. And if it needs to stay at a certain level, they need to know at what point is it time to take the next, or rather they need to adjust the dosage so that the next day it's time to take the next pill. So if you take any sort of regular medication, somebody's done the math to figure out the correct dosage. All right, so let's build the model. Now you may be thinking there's a problem here. If we don't have a beginning time, we don't have a beginning population like we do with the planet, but that's okay. We know that the model is gonna look like f of t equals a zero e to the bt. Because it's decay, we should expect the b to come out negative. We'll see if it does. Um, let's see. So how are we gonna start this? Well, we don't have an initial time, but we can say that t equals zero is when we take the aspirin. What would a zero represent? Well, that would be the amount we took. How much aspirin's in your body? Well, I literally just swallowed it. But how are we gonna say that half of it has decayed when I don't even know how much of it we took. Well, it doesn't matter how much we took, it just matters that there's half of it left. One half A is the amount after half has decayed, which would have been in 12 hours. So in other words, what this last thing is saying is that if we put 12 into our function, because that's how many hours it would take to elapse to get half of the aspirin decayed, the amount should be half of what we started with. Can we take advantage of this? Absolutely. But we don't know what A0 is. You'll see why it doesn't matter. I know what my function is supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like this. And I know what it looks like if I put in 12 for the t. If I put in 12 for the t, I get a0 
e to the b times 12, but let's go ahead and write it as 12b. That's what f of 12 would look like, but it's supposed to equal half of what I started with. Do you see why it doesn't matter what we started with? If we start solving this exponential equation, our first move is to isolate the exponential term, isolate the e to the 12b power. Even though we don't know the initial amount, I know what I'm supposed to do with it, divide it away. And then suddenly becomes, it suddenly becomes clear why it doesn't matter what the initial amount was. Because not only do the a's cancel on the left, but they also cancel on the right. Now it's a pretty straight shot to the end. If you will allow me to fast forward, and if you won't, then I recommend you to the previous video where we solved an equation structurally like this in detail. I'll describe the moves though. Take the natural log of both sides, and then we would divide by 12. Well, that was pretty easy. Natural log of 1 half divided by 12. Natural log of 1 half, and then divided by 12, is about, four decimal places, negative 0.0578. So the decay rate is about 5.78% per hour, since that's what T is measured in. And it wouldn't be hard to generalize what just happened here. The one half is here because we were talking half-life. So any half-life problem, this would always be natural log of one half. And the number on the bottom actually represents the half-life. So it's really easy to make a generalization here. But let's write our specific function. A0, which we still don't have an initial amount, e to the, that number, negative 0.0578 t. t equals 0 is when we take the aspirin, and A0 is the amount we took. All right, we have our model, and we can complete the model if you tell us how much aspirin to take. Take 100 milligrams. I'm not sure if that's a lot, a little, or just right. But if we were told 100 milligrams, we could put 100 here and say that we're measuring milligrams of aspirin in our system. Let's go to part B. How long will it take for aspirin to decay to 10%? Again, we don't have an initial amount, but we don't need it. Since we're being asked how long it will take, we're being asked to solve for T. So we don't know the input. But we know the output needs to be 10% of what we started with. How do you find 10% of something? You change the percent to a decimal and multiply. 10% of what we started with is what we're looking for after a certain amount of time. All right, let's solve it. Our function is a0 e to the negative 0.0578t. That needs to equal the 10% of what we started with. And again, it doesn't matter what we started with because the a's are going to cancel. Divide both sides by a, a0. Hey, look, it's the same setup for the fourth time in a row. I know how to solve this, and hopefully by now you know also. Again, if you need details on how to get from this exponential equation to its solution, go back and watch the previous video. Even better, go back and watch the video series 4.4 about solving exponential equations. I forget the video number, but it's the one titled Exponential Equations Unlike Bases. We would take the natural log of both sides, which means we get the natural log of 0.10. That would cancel the e, and then we would divide by the coefficient of t, negative 0.0578. So whatever that is, is the number of hours it will take for the aspirin to decay to 10% of the amount that we took. Natural log of 0.10 divided by negative 0.0578, and we get about 39, well, let's round it to the nearest hour. It's 39.8, but we'll say it's approximately 40 hours. In theory, the aspirin will never leave your bloodstream, but at some point it's going to be negligible and, and virtually zero. All right, so half-life. Um, as long as you understand the concept that we don't need to know the initial population, we just need to know that after a certain amount of time we have half of it, everything's going to be okay. 